Okay, our switching gears here. Um, Brad Rader uh, and Chad Kruger are going to tag team this, I assume, in some form or fashion. Um, it's going to talk about actually be housed, well, will be housed on the on the fairgrounds, which is a pretty exciting uh, development for the community up here. So um, I'll hand it over to Brad. Uh, you want to walk around? <laughs> okay. No, go ahead. I'll, I'll make it work. Go ahead. I'll, I'll... So thanks, uh, Chris. I appreciate it. And that's really a Pleasure to be here in front of um, such a great group. And they've locked the doors on both sides so you guys can't leave. So you have to listen to us, at least uh, for this presentation. So and anybody stands up, I'm going to call them out. But I'm kidding. But I appreciate the time. Um, this is a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And that's, I've been talking about this project with a number of people over the last six months. And I'm honored to be um, involved with it. And I'm really excited about where we're heading. And my compadre, uh, Chad Kruger over there, is going to talk to you in a minute. And I'm just going to kind of kick it off. So this project um, has been in the discussion for a number of years. And the Northwest Washington Fair Board and the Foundation Board of the Fair have both um, you know, have both built this, talked about it, and have been working on it. And the idea was, um, let's just kick it off. We got to start. And so, uh, as some of you know, I took a little time off from the farm. I'm back now. But I had a little extra time. And my passion for agriculture runs deep. If for those of the, you that were here this morning, um, my, my roots are fairly deep in, in agriculture. And what I say, what I mean about a once in a lifetime opportunity is that, you know, we have, there's, I'm going to be off a little bit on the numbers, but we have, you know, five to 6 million people between, let's say Vancouver, BC and south of Seattle. Well, I think most of you would agree with me that a lot of those people are disconnected from agriculture. You know, anybody that disagrees, let's talk about it. But and it worries us in our business that they are. Um, they go to the grocery store, the food's there, you shop. I mean, even for us, we're guilty of that sometimes, where you, you don't really think about how that produce got there. Um, whether it's from the United States or not, it's still a difficult process. So the idea for this facility is to have a, a home that would be open year-round on the fairgrounds and be able to show off agriculture from a variety of exhibits, not uh, Henry's sitting there. So I won't say it's, he likes to say pictures on the wall. Well, we're not going to have pictures on the wall. Uh, he's going to hold me to that and the rest of the group, but we're, it's not just going to be like a museum. This would be something active. This would be, you know, think of something like what we have out here, but in a much more live format, fruit processing equipment running, machines running, showing how they're harvested. Uh, can, you know, think about a robotic milker because as you guys, most of you know, the dairy industry in this county is, is number one by far as far as dollars. And we have, you know, with everything combined, uh, raspberry, blueberry, dairy, seed potatoes, when you look at all of the support industries, which some of you are involved with, it's over a billion dollars in this county. And, um, you know, and there's folks from Skagit here. Our dollars are a touch more than what goes on in Skagit. We partner with them. But so we really want to showcase agriculture locally, but we also want to explain this to people that don't get it. And this is an opportunity that, that we've um, come up with is to put up a facility. So this, the plan is to, for those of you who know the campus here at the fair, just to cross between here and the, and the fairway center where the Woods Coffee is, there's a building. It's right next to the Expo building. 
if we don't take it down and build one, it's probably going to fall down at some point in one of our northeast winds. And so our plan is to, to tear that building down and to build a around 40,000 square foot facility that um, would house the exhibits on the main floor. And also, we haven't really decided exactly what that all looks like, but there's going to be some exhibit room. There's going to be some other uh, items on that main floor. I mean, I have a lot of different ideas and what I think will work, and other people have those ideas too. But can we have a little restaurant in there? Can we have, you know, like I said, a robotic milker someday? Can we have different things? We've got the room to do it. And it's all about how we can pull this together. The second floor, and that's why Chad's here, uh, well, the whole facility really, but you know, Washington State University is, is a key for our future. And they have, um, yesterday I was down with, with Chad and we interviewed um, a dean, one of four candidates for the dean um, of agriculture. And you know, they do so much for us, now we need to find a home for them. And instead of building a pole building, let's have a spot where we can show off that Washington State University brand on the main street and explain to uh, people that don't get it, and I'm sorry to classify, to make it sound like we're against them, we're not. They're the consumer, we need to, we need to show them. But to have a place where they can hang out, have research done, have a, have a home where we can meet and talk with them, and also, and Chad's gonna talk about this, I don't wanna steal all of his ideas, but a place for them to teach. Wouldn't that be cool? You know, they have a campus in Everett, but could we have a place for them to do that? Well, this thing would be big enough to do that. So if you can imagine and kind of wrap your heads around how that would look. And then the third level there, there's enough room to most likely put the fair office up in there and then we'd tear the fair office down in front, which is that green wrap building there. So as you, as you know, these projects are not free. These projects cost money. Um, when I talk to, I see the CHS banner hanging back there, and uh, I talk to CHS Foundation. One of my jobs is to fundraise for this thing, if you can figure out where I'm going with this. But talk to CHS. There are four projects just like this going on in the United States right now. One of them, I talked to uh, the person that's involved in Wisconsin, $12 million. It's on 36 acres. It's a big deal. We're not looking at that. We're around about 4.7 million but these things take money. And um, you know, we're, we're looking to businesses, the families locally. Um, you know, I've talked to BP, uh, Phillips 66 about helping because I think we all in business in this county, we all need to work together. And so we're having a lot of conversations. The idea is to tear down that building after the fair of 18, start building this one and have it ready for the fair of 19. So that's a very aggressive plan. Um, we really don't want to push it off a year, so we're focused on on this uh, this spring to be a great campaign season. How am I doing on time? Chad keeps looking at his watch. Okay. So you can see that you know, there's been a lot of work done on the current exhibit, and and so there's a there's a farming for life exhibit that does live at the fair, and but it's in a tent. We really need to find a home for it, and then we need to blow it up and, and be able to, you know, show people what it's really what what farming is really like. And um, you know, I went through one of these over in Boardman, Oregon. It's called the Sage Center. Pretty impressive. And they spent four million on the building. They spent four million on the exhibits. But I'm gonna so um, you know, we're, we've got about seven hundred to a million in budgeted for exhibits. And we would charge for this to, to get into it. Not a lot, but we would, we would charge to cover overhead. So here's some, you guys are all gonna have stories just like this, especially you that, that have farmed. I mean, everybody has a connection to agriculture. I don't care what you do, because you, you eat. So there's stories, a lot of good stories. Here's some more stories. And you know, the fair, for those of you that have been to any fair, you know that when you walk through those gates, it, it exudes agriculture. I mean, there's no way that it doesn't. So there's a lot of connections. We need to keep that alive. This would be a great showcase. 
So here's our pyramid. You guys have probably seen one of these before. So we're sitting half million to a million dollars right now. And uh, we've, got, we've got our work ahead of us, but we've got some good plans. So we have asked the state, and uh, for those of you from Washington State, you know that there's some things tied up right now in the, in the capital budget, but we have 1.2 to 1.5 earmarked for this project. That's gonna be a great uh, help to get us going. And then, sorry, I've stolen most of your time, but this is, uh, this is a gentleman that spends a lot of time on the west side uh, promoting agriculture, spends a lot of time in Pullman, and we, uh, we appreciate all you do for us, Chad. Thanks, Brad. So I'm gonna talk specifically about the potential option of WSU participating in this program, and it's a discussion that's been ongoing for quite a while with Brad, basically since I was sent over by the college to direct the Mount Vernon Research Center um, about two and a half years ago. So just kind of to, for context, WSU really does appreciate the partnership with the industry and community up here in terms of agriculture. It, it really is valuable and important to us. and we're hoping that it's time to actually take it to the next level. And so both the university and college leadership have recognized that importance. And in spite of, we're going through some difficult budget times at the university, university and college leadership has made commitments and are honoring those commitments to agriculture in this region to actually kind of bolster what's been here historically and, and take it to the next level. Um, some of you may have actually interacted yesterday with uh, our most recent candidate for a faculty position, a soil science position that's never existed in Northwest Washington. And we're hoping that we sign her next week. And so that's kind of a commitment that's been made by the college when virtually no other faculty hires across the entire college are happening. Um, moving forward, as, as Brad has indicated, we're in discussions about increasing a physical presence for research extension and education here uh, in partnership with, with the, the project that Brad has mentioned. Um, in terms of our goal, we've, we've been discussing the idea of launching this partnership in early 2020. That's been kind of the, the target all along. Um, we, we recently merged the idea of the Linden Ag Station that we've been talking about with the, the fairgrounds operation because there's just potential synergies that make it a lot easier to actually envision how we would operate. But what we're really talking about on the research side is moving forward with kind of the consolidation of a physical presence here um, so that it's, it's visible, the WSU brand is on it, we're here. Um, it would be in partnership with the Mount Vernon Research Center where many of the faculty are always located, but we're here all the time. All the research that you've been hearing about at this conference the last couple of days is being done by WSU people who are coming here from other sites. And, and that's actually a bit of a challenge to continue to manage. And so to have a physical presence here is a real advantage to us. And in addition to that, beyond the research side, the potential for educational events like this or other meetings, but also with what Brad mentioned about we're expanding into Western Washington in terms of undergraduate education access. And while there is a brand new $66 million facility in Everett, that facility was built intentionally to operate distance-based education opportunities. And so there's already been a couple of other locations where kind of an endpoint for distance access to undergraduate education have been created. And it's very possible we could do that out of this facility as well. Um, so in addition to kind of the physical visible presence, one of the things that we would do here is we would actually install and equip a field processing lab so that samples that when they're taken from experiments up here don't have to be carted clear to Mount Vernon or clear to Puyallup in order to do the, to, to do the, first, layer, layer, the first layer of sample analysis, but that could be done right here in this facility and then kind of refined samples would move south to, to the other laboratories where there's a lot more expense involved. Um, the centerpiece of the whole plan is the berry breeding program. And so um, the president came to a meeting this summer and committed that if the industry is willing to partner, especially with an endowment, we will move forward with rehiring 
the breeding position when Pat does retire. And in fact, he even said, if you're willing to commit to this, we won't wait till Pat retires. We'll actually bring someone in early and have a transitional phase, which for those of you who pay attention to university positions, that simply doesn't happen. Oftentimes it's five to 10 years before we replace a program, if we replace a program. But he committed, I was there, I heard it, Brad was there, he heard it, that if the industry's willing, he's that committed to making this happen. Okay, so kind of the last statement, you know, we've got a ways to go. There's several pieces of this plan that are, that are still in development and moving and it's gonna cost some money. Uh, the university has committed, you know, not only to that position if the endowment is there, but also to some operating resources relative to the research piece. And it's a fairly significant commitment. But in order to do this, we also will have to raise additional funds above the, the fairgrounds piece, somewhere between two and a half and three and a half million dollars to make it. And so that's, that's what the partnership really will look like with the community and the industry. Um, last comment, and, and Brad mentioned this too, we're in the midst of interviewing candidates for the dean of the college. This is the biggest possible decision that we could make in the college. And one of the key thresholds of decision making, and I've talked to the provost, is we will only hire a candidate who grasps the importance of agriculture in Western Washington. And that's a really big deal compared to kind of maybe past ideas around what the priority is for the dean of the college of ag. And so you will see the new dean here working on this project. And so I think that's an important statement of our commitment to this project. All right, with that, any questions for Brad or for me? Uh, just a little clarification on the, the expense and fundraising point of view, because it, it, for the very breeding program to be included here, are you looking for a separate site to actually put plot trials? And is the fundraising for the endowment going to be competing with the fundraising for this educational center? So one of the reasons that we did decide to bring these pieces together is because if we did them apart, they would be competing. And so the plan is, you know, let's bring them together so that we have efficiencies in our in our total concept and we don't have to do you know duplicate things for the research station versus the fairgrounds facility and putting those together in many ways is, is just a lot of you know makes it relatively seamless the endowment would specifically be an endowed chair and what that does is it enables us to recruit the very best person in the world that we can get you know the endowments are quite powerful as a recruitment tool um, the other pieces of the fundraising on the research side really relate to equipping, you know, the laboratory facility and some operating, operating facilities for research up here. Okay, maybe it's just my confusion, but how much is going to be needed for the endowment? And is there another plot of land that you're going to be looking at for berry breeding trials or is that going to also be located on the fairgrounds so i'll i'll answer the endowment question then i'll turn it to brad to answer the the land question because th there's a land committee in this project that's been working on uh, you know what's the right plan there the endow an endowed professor is 1.5 million dollars an endowed chair is three million dollars so if you're really excited about it you can you can reach for the three million dollar level the key thing that that does is it it lines up a set of commitments within the institution that basically match the commitment. And so we actually get more from the institution when you endow a position. So it's kind of a, a, a double benefit or triple benefit. Number one, it helps us recruit the very best person out there. Number two, it gives that person additional operating resources to build a, a better program. And number three, it queues up a bunch of other commitments within the institution that actually increase overall the amount of commitment that the university brings to to the program well i would add to that that the you know the endowed chair just something chair that we, we've been talking about that quite a bit recently we have to figure that out i think the apple industry has five or six of them 
So, um, and you guys can see what the honey crisp apples doing and the new cosmic crisp and we need, we need help and we need horsepower on the land side. Uh, our group isn't, and I'm one of those is not as concerned about that. We would like to find a home, a really good home for the university. And then we would be, we're going to be moving plots anyway, you know, to go out and buy 40 or a hundred acres around here is would take our entire budget. So our idea and uh, with some of the other farmers in the area that we would be finding land and moving those plots. I mean, we have, my family has 700 and some acres and if we got to house it, we'll figure it out. And uh, we just kind of, I mean, I don't know, I think everybody's on the same page with that, but we, we just want to find this facility and get it built. And then we're going to circle back on that. I mean, we re realize what Pat has in Puyallup um, and we got to mirror that or make it bigger here. Thanks, everybody. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Don't forget that.